the turn the sound on? We uh, I, I had input from our IT person that because of this whiteboard. Good morning. Uh, the camera reads the whiteboard and puts my face in shadow. So. Presto Changeo, here we have little mini stage lights in here to brighten Barbara up. <laughs> 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 so welcome, welcome, come on in, Chris. We always begin everything with a spiritual mind treatment, so take a breath. <sighs> Let it out and continue breathing. <laughs> And what I know is that there is a power and a presence that is God itself speaking itself into form as heavens and earth and universe layers, time and space and all of life. I know that that is our true nature. It is the true essence of who we are. And this day we come together to stand spiritually straight and tall and claim that divine life that is ours right here and right now, a life of absolute perfect health, abundant prosperity, overflowing joy, and wonderful, wonderful success. I know that this is why we have come to earth, that this is the life that we live right here and right now. We speak it into form. We know it in every way. And how great is that? Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude for everything, for every moment, for all that we are and all that we get to share. As together we say, and, and so it is. Sickness and death. 
I know the truth, and the truth makes me free from evil in every form and from all material bondage now and forever. God works through me to will and do whatever ought to be done by me. I am happy. I am holy. I am loving. I am wise. I and the Father are one. Amen. Amen. How did that work for you? Oh, really good. You did it in the mornings? Yes. You did it in the evenings? Yes. Yeah. So remember that in this class we are, you know, stepping over that line that we so adamantly hold in the rest of our classes, which is we don't move into the world of duality, we don't move into good and bad, right and wrong, uh, that kind of thing. But in this class, to hold true to the original um, tenets of mental science and to stay in alignment with what Annie Ritz Malitz is bringing forth in these primary lessons of healing, we go ahead and we go there. So you actually said bondage, <laughs> sin, sickness, death, evil. <laughs> How do you feel about that? It was weird, wasn't it? And yet there's some part of me that says, I am not subject to the law of sin. You got nothing on me. I am not subject. And I, I, I like that phrase last week, that sin or, or sickness has no presence and no power in my life. So if you're going to use that kind of an idea, of a dualistic idea, you got to trump it. You got to trump it into the ground. And then what she does is she brings you out to the other side. And Ernest Holmes always says, if you're going to use a denial, it's important to follow it by an affirmation so that you end up with this experience of wholeness and oneness and connectedness and all of that. So in the very end, I am happy, I am holy, I am loving, I am wise, I and the Father are one. And amen really translates to and so it is. Yeah, yeah. So is there anything that anyone wants to share about that homework from lesson one? Yes. I, Laura. I had to add a word and I had to change a word. What'd you add? I, in the last part, I also added, I'm, I'm prosperous. And Good. Then, um, I could not do, I am the father of one. Okay, what'd you change it to? I am the spirit. Okay, I am, I am the spirit or one. That's great. This was written over 100 years ago. So that was just the language. And we had a long talk, and I'm going over this again for those of you who were not here last week. We had a long talk about how we were all just going to take a deep breath and let it be okay to follow her train of thought, which is old time metaphysics, and it has a lot of duality in it. But the purpose of the duality is to take you into a position of empowerment and oneness. So we're going to move into that and just let it be okay. But like Laura said, if you need to change a word here and there to keep the spirit of the teaching alive without gagging you, then that's okay for you to do. Lisa. You kind of referred to this. What I loved is it brought the rebel in me. It really brought the rebel in me out again. Right? The one that was there as a child. I'm going to get you. Oh, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, as a child, I saw the contradiction. Right. 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 Yeah. Anybody else on the homework lesson one? Carolani. I had something just last night where something came up, that was an illusion came up for me, and I was, uh, and I came, and it was time for bed, and I read it, and I swear, it's like, it was magic. It was like, really? It went away. It's just, I, now, I'm not saying I didn't take it back later, however, I'll take it later. <laughs> but what was interesting was, it went, I could feel it. I mean, I'm getting more tuned in to the feeling, and I knew that it was not a non-issue for me. It had gone to the nothingness. Right. You know, if I want to take it back, I did. But I knew that I, what I could do. And that, and speaking those words, put me in that place. Yes, it puts you in that place. Because the purpose of words is to put you in a place, to have you have an experience that doesn't have anything to do with words. You know, and I've, I've been watching myself. I use denials a lot more than I thought. There were two or three times last week when I had the idea that it would be very easy for me to get sick. 
And what I said is, oh no, I don't have time for this. This is not happening. And away I would run, only to remember maybe a couple of days later, oh yeah, I think I've got this headache sinus thing. Oh no, you don't. You are not getting sick. You don't have time to get sick. This is not happening. And off I would run. And I would love to tell you that I finished it with this wonderful affirmation and treatment, but I didn't. I did it on the run. And denials work. Denials work, but I would recommend that you don't stay there and just do denials. A lot of old-time metaphysics, Christian science, that kind of thing, is, is mostly denials. And in my experience, you've got to work yourself out of that and bring yourself back into alignment with the oneness. But if you read Ernest Holmes, he used a lot of denials. One of my favorite is, sickness is neither person, place, nor thing, which means it doesn't exist. It's not real. And that's part of that different kind of mentality that we're stepping into. And so we use different kind of languaging to go there. And in this class, again, just take a deep breath, go there, and watch what happens. Chris? It's the contrast. If you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. Right, right. Good, good, good. So what about any? Yes, uh, Stephanie. <laughs> thank you. I was uh, very deeply, positively affected right in the class, just mm -hmm. hearing the words. And I have been working with words and images for a while, but it, I was really deeply affected right from the start. And I felt vibration, which is um, one of the manifestations of my God process in class. And that night, I had hours of vibrations in my formerly bum knee, bone to bum knee. Whoa! And it's healed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I have seen people who stay with this. And, and uh, watching that five hour memorial service for Johnny Coleman a week ago really reminded me of the the great teachers of this movement that just will not be swayed. Your knee is in absolute perfect health because God is your knee. And that is the only reality and everything else is a lie. And when you can go there, things happen. Well, it came into my mind that this is a miracle. And right away I said, this is not a miracle, this is my birthright, I'm right. God. Right, this is your birthright. Every miracle is simply a manifestation of that truth that has always been so. Excellent. Anybody else want to share about the homework from lesson one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can hang on. <laughs> okay, homework from lesson two. Copy and learn the following denials and repeat them night and morning in conjunction with the affirmations at the close of the preceding lesson. That was lesson one. Since, God, since in God there is no evil, I deny that there is any reality to evil at all. There is no real power in sin or death. There is no real substance to sickness or disease. There is no true cause for sorrow. There is nothing to fear. God's world is spiritual, not material. There is no matter. Spirit is the only substance. Personality is not the real self. The true individual is spirit, not flesh. I am the free and fearless, impersonal, selfless child of God, and what I am, so are you, my neighbor, as myself. Amen. Now that is taking some stuff right head on. So, how was that? You were supposed to do both lessons then, together, night and morning. Did anybody have issues with some of these words? Is this a change? Did you change them? No, because <laughs> these words are the words that I know as the Bible, where other people would know it as their Bible, this is my Bible, so it's not, I don't look at it as denial so much as the teachings, and now they've shifted into new words that mean the same thing. So it's, right. So what was your issue with the words? 
I didn't have it. Oh, oh, you raised your hand when I said, did anybody have issues with the words? No, no. issues were none. I love this language. Yes. Because they have no substance in form. The spirit is the only substance. Nina. Yes, I had a problem with spirit is not material. Because spirit is everything. Right. Right, we're going to talk about that. In this original mental science, we talked about this last week, this world isn't real. The only reality is the presence of God right here and right now. And that mindset heals. When we get all caught up in, oh my God, it's bone on bone and the cartilage is long gone and you've been living around for decades and that's just the way it is and they say you got to have a new leaf, it's ever going to get better. When we give too much validity to this, to this effect in physical form, then we get caught up in it. When we can pull ourselves out and say, this is not real, there's no power, there's no presence of this in my life, the only truth is God in form as us. I see it in me. I see it in you. I don't care what your body is, what the body of your affairs are, what your, what your personality is. I see the presence of God, and that is the only reality. That energy shows up in form. And frankly, I think we have diluted this teaching by wanting to be so process-oriented and to work out our issues and deal with what happened in the past. There is no past. There is only this now moment. So yes, that, that is part of what we talked about last week, how we're going to have to take that and set it aside for this class. But I am also going to bring it up in a few minutes so that we can talk about it, because it sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous to say that this doesn't exist. This doesn't exist. And yet, if you get into quantum physics, what do they say? This doesn't exist. <laughs> It doesn't exist. It only exists when we give it power and we give it power over us. Then we are no longer the powerful creator of our lives. So the original metaphysics just takes us right out of that and says, you know, it's very absolutist. God is all that there is. God is what I am and that's all I know and I'm sticking to it and I don't care what happens. And I will claim and, and speak and see and know that presence of the divine in every moment of my life. And you get around someone who's really doing that, and they walk by and people's lives just change. You lay in bed all night and you get this vibration going on, which is your body healing. And things change, whether it's money falling out of the sky, your physical body completely shifting, or your entire world changing. It comes from the point of view, and the less that we can dilute that, and the more that we can stay open to that idea that truly only God is real, whatever that means to you, only the presence of spirit is real, that presence speaks itself into form through what they call the word, and that is what manifests reality. So if we want to have that, we become God beings <coughs> and speak our word into form un, um, uh, uh, undistracted from that. Focus entirely and intently on that presence of spirit. And we do it even though part of us goes, or oh, it's ridiculous. I gotta put gas in my car. I'm hungry. I've gotta eat. You know, who are you? Well, I don't have a name anymore. That kind of thing. People say that, but if you can let yourself set that aside for a little bit, things will change and they change very quickly in this kind of a mentality. So who else has anything that they want to share about this second homework? Yes, Jackie. Um, um, I had a problem just with the scripture. I mean, knowing how much it changed before Annie got to it. Um, and I thought that what she wrote, even though I'm not there yet, um, what she wrote was much more clear to me. I gave much more credence to what she had to say, not what the Bible had. Right, and yet this class was specifically designed by me for people who have been asking for some Bible. So you're going to get a lot of Bible in it. Right, I know. And, and how many people are enjoying the Bible aspect of the class? Not that many. <laughs> how many of you are just here because it's a morning class? <laughs> Well, because I was going to teach a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible class after this, but if you guys are...
are not into the Bible, maybe we should rethink that. Thanks, Selena. So on uh, today's homework, you don't have these kinds of affirmations to do. This is a 12-lesson program that is specifically designed to have you heal, whether it's a physical healing, whether it's a, an emotional healing, a financial healing, whatever it is, it is 12 lessons to get you to the point where your life is healed. And so whatever it is, bring it up in your consciousness, what you want that healing energy to be working on as you go through this class. Remember when she wrote this, there were no antibiotics, there were no uh, laser surgeries, no microscopic <laughs> stuff. Uh, the, the medical profession was what we would call barbaric, and people died like crazy. And so you get to where you've got you know, tuberculosis or something like that, okay, let's try God. You know, let's try something. Well, you can't think about that, that disease that you've been diagnosed with. You can't give it any energy. You can't think about anything negative. You can't think about anything that you feel bad about or sorry, sorrow uh, over. You can't be miserable. You can't think fear thoughts or negativity or judgment. Or you can die. And so people would go, okay, okay, I will do that. <clears throat> And then they, will have, they would have these miraculous healings. Because if you change cause, effect must change. It must change. But if you have the same idea that created the old effect in your life, and you just stay there, then it's kind of crazy to say, why isn't my life changing? Oh, my back hurts. Why doesn't my back stop hurting? Oh, my back hurts. How you doing? Oh, gosh, my back hurts. Do you know any good whatevers? <laughs> of course my back is going to continue to hurt because I keep holding that energy. But if I refuse to see the condition, if I refuse to talk about it, refuse to think about it, then my back is going to stop hurting. It is going to stop hurting. We are these amazingly powerful, creative, spiritual beings, and we have yet to learn how to harness that power. So part of this is learning how to harness that power. So just take a deep breath. If you've got some issues with things, set it aside until the end of class and see if things have not amazingly shifted in your life. And you'll be the one who goes around and stops and angles when the electricity goes off and it says, there is no loss of power in the divine because God is all power. And I claim that power right here at, oh, it came off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the choice is to either move fully and completely into an awareness of that presence of spirit right here and right now, or fall into the abyss of race belief and be at effect of circumstances. And once you practice that back and forth, like Carolani, making the illness go away and then going, wow, I picked it up again. <laughs> but I know if I made it go away and I picked it up again, I can make it go away again. Once you practice that for a while, you realize that the price you pay for not speaking your word into form is much greater than the price, that, than, than what you get for the price. Of, no, no, that what you get by speaking your word into form is much greater than what you will get if you stay quiet and small. And so you get to where you don't care because everybody's a reflection of you anyway. Oh, you're the reflection of my negativity. You're the reflection of my fear. You're the reflection of my playing small. Well, let me tell me a thing or two. <laughs> There's only one thing going on. It is the presence of spirit. It is me and it is you now and that is it and that's all I'm letting in my life. And then watch. Watch how things change. Watch how everything changes. It's amazing. And they call it a miracle. <laughs> so you had a reading assignment of lessons one and two. Did you have any questions about your reading assignments, those of you who read it? Is anybody still having trouble uh, downloading a book or buying a book? So Margaret, I want you to meet either during the break or after class with some people for a few minutes and tell them how to get to aid books and buy the book online. And is there anyone who's an expert at downloading? I'm an expert at downloading, Tamara? Great. And Judith? Wonderful. 
Tamara, you want to download your book? That's what you're saying. So Judith, if you want help downloading the book, see Judith. If you want help buying the book on the internet, because it's not, it's not at Barnes & Noble. I mean, this is a very highly speci specified book. So see Margaret if you want to figure out who's got the rare books that'll sell it to you. And Judith, if you want to figure out how to download it, because I would like you reading. Bob. Well, when you say download, you're talking about Kindle or someplace where you start? It's on our website. Oh, okay. www.csl.ashville. CSLAsheville.org. Free books. It's, it, no, no, I'm sorry. It says free downloads. And then of all the many downloads you can have of classes and Sunday celebrations and workshops and Ernest Holmes uh, radio shows, all of that, you pick books. And when the list of books come up, those are all free books on our website, all in public domain. You're welcome. It is my hobby. Uh, click on Primary Lessons, and that will download into your computer or your iPad, whatever you access the website with. Then you can plug your, your um, tablet or your phone or your Kindle or your Nook or whatever you've got into your computer. And what I do is just drag it. Just click it on and drag it over into what I want to read it on, and then you've got it. Chris. Uh, mine actually downloaded directly into my Kindle. Yeah. When yeah, I went it online, it, yeah. it asked for Kindle or PDF, and it went directly into my Kindle. And then also, too, if you go onto a PDF, the Kindle does not give you page numbers, but the PDF will give you page numbers. Great, and I understand that my page numbers and the uh, page numbers on the uh, website book are not exactly the same. I'm not sure how that happened. I think maybe once I printed it out, it, it repaginated the pages a little bit to get printed out. So go get the book. It's good stuff. It's not a lot of reading at all, and it's good stuff. It is absolute, pure metaphysics. It's the metaphysics that I you know, cut my teeth on back in the 70s, where people would just stand up and speak truth, and that is the only truth. And no, we're not going to go through a guided meditation. And no, we're not going to do forgiveness sheets. We're not that. None of that is real. None of that is real. The only thing that is real is the presence of the divine in you as you is you now. Period. End of story. And that's what I came up on. And then, you know, we had Wayne Dyer who took all of science of mind and softened it for the masses. And, and that has been very beneficial for him in his life. And we have, oh, let's read Deepak. But Deepak is, a, is an allopathic doctor that comes from Hindu roots. He's not uh, a metaphysician. And we have Marianne Williamson, who's Unity, and you know all of these other people that we've, we've lifted up and held in high regard, which is great. But I believe we have softened the teaching in so doing. And this class is about getting right back to basics. And no, we're not going to give any energy, any life, or any reality to negativity, to limitation, to fear, to sickness of any kind or any circumstance. One of the original teachers of, this, of, of religious science, of science of mind, was a man named Robert Bitzer. And he would say over and over and over again, we do not sacrifice principle even on special occasions. It doesn't matter. Even when the World Trade Centers came down, we don't sacrifice principle. God is all that there is. That is the only thing that's happening. And, and I've seen or I've heard ha people in class who have gone there as on I-40 a truck was coming at them. And the state highway patrol said, we don't understand your skid marks stopped. And then they started again. And where your skid marks did not exist was where the truck came through. I mean, we are dealing with things that will move a vehicle out of the way of an impending wreck. We are dealing with things that will regrow cartilage overnight. We are dealing with something that will change the world of form just like that. When we allow ourselves to be clear, to be in alignment with that, and not say, oh, no, Barbara, I don't know if I want to be that powerful. I want to stay small. I want to stay in the old me. No, you can't do that. You've got to be willing to stand up, to know who you are, 
to speak it out into the world no matter what people think of you because that's only your own unhealed belief coming back as other people and to demand from life that which is rightfully yours. Your birthright to have a body that works. Not only a body that works, but a body that feels great when you get up in the morning. Yeah. You have all of the energy and all of life that is in you as you is you now. You come into alignment with that and you spring up out of bed in the morning. <laughs> you do. You can hardly contain yourself. You're so excited about life. That's what happens when you let go of anything that is unlike the truth of you and grab hold of that which is true. When you talk about uh, something happened to skid marks, yes, I saw a video on the internet. There's a traffic intersection. This guy's right across the intersection, and you see this flash, and all of a sudden the guy was over here. Yes, and yes. And I mean, it was like, well, I mean, is that Photoshop or what? But it's no. Like the camera just sitting there. And I was like, right. Way. And then you talk about it. Yes way. <laughs> yes way. Yeah. Yes way. I mean, if we can hold time and space together to sit on this chair. We can do anything. We can do anything, but we've been hypnotized into this idea that says this is the way that it is, and I want you to know that is not the way that it is, unless it is that you are an amazing spiritual being playing on the earth plane and planet earth, and you can come in and out of form however you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. You can bring things into your experience, you can let things go, and you can live the divine God life that you were always meant to live. That is the only truth about what's going on here. Otherwise, we're not really here. And I know that that sounds a little bit crazy, but if you can begin to imagine the idea that none of this is real. It's only real if we make it real. Ernest says nothing is real unless you make it real. So what are you making real? If it's anything that says, I shouldn't, I mustn't, I'm not good enough, it'll never come, it'll never happen, it's impossible, these are the cards I got dealt, that is, in Annie Ritz Melitz's words, a lie. You are lying to yourself, and if you want to live in the lie, you can do that because you are a powerful being. But it is a lie. The truth is all that is real. God is, in all of its infinite, magnificent glory, God is as you. <coughs> and that's it. That's it. <coughs> Absolutely. I have not even touched on today. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> so next week, your reading lesson is lesson three. So just read the next lesson, lesson three. <coughs> and here is the question that is up. If it's all God, then where do the thoughts of all the negative stuff and their manifested ions, our human condition, come from? If it's all God, how is it that we create negativity? And is that negativity, as, as Nina said, since it's all God, the world form must be part of God. If it's all God, then the negativity, the disease, the limitation, the fear, that's all got to be a part of God. And that is a very valid question. What's up with that? What do you think? We create it with our thoughts. We create it with our thoughts. Rick? It's all part of the physical experience of a spiritual person. It's all part of the physical experience of the spiritual person, but it is not your true nature. And I'll grant you, it's a little schizophrenic here, and I'm asking a lot from you, but I guarantee you the rewards will be great. If you stand, and, and this is all physical, but if you stand in the way of the light and focus on the shadow, then the shadow is real to you, but the shadow has no life of itself. But if all we have ever known is the shadow, and I come and say, there is no shadow, you're standing in the way of your own light. There is only light. Oh no, Barbara, there's a shadow. I know it. That's all I've ever known. So I'll give you that it can appear to be very real. When you're in pain, when you're afraid, when things are not going the way you thought they were going to go, that can have a lot of quote-unquote reality to it. But remember last week we talked extensively about the difference between the absolute, that which God is, pure, perfect, love, light, peace, joy, wisdom, 
harmony, happiness, abundance, health, wholeness. That is the absolute reality of the truth of the divine. And then there is the relative reality, which is our lives. And when all we see is the relative reality, we think that all of this is the only reality, the only thing going on, that there's no way to change it. I can't put my hand through this table. I can't walk on fire. There's no way to change that. And then that's the life that we live because that's our belief that that's the truth of it, but it doesn't hold water in the light of spirit. When we have a spiritual awakening, it's very easy to see that all of that other stuff isn't, isn't true. When we have been poor and then we experience prosperity, we had poverty, but now we are experiencing prosperity. When we were miserable and then we move into joy, we had that misery, but now we are in our joy. There is, and even all of that is on a relative plane, there is an absolute truth of ourselves and of life itself that never changing, it is an everlasting truth. It is an absolute truth. And we can, we talked about this last night in class, we can, through the power of our free will, manifest whatever we want. It is totally our choice how we experience the whole health and wholeness and love and peace and joy and prosperity of the divine. We can be miserable, filled with sorrow, filled with fear, filled with lack and limitation and disease and pain and suffering. We can do that, but this is the key of this this early mental science, and it is what I believe has been softened over the decades, that that doesn't exist. It only exists in our head. And no matter how much we create pain and suffering and struggle in our life, it is not real. That it is only a shadow of our own thought. And when we can step into the fullness and wholeness of who we are and claim that divine right, that divine light, as us now, all of the circumstances and the conditions in our lives change. And they don't, they don't you know, dally around. There's no <laughs> dilly-dallying around. It's not a process. It is a manifestation of a shift of cause. Comments? Because I want you to come with me here. And I know I'm asking you something different. Ginny. Well, what I loved was on page, uh, well, I don't know what page it's going to connect with, but it says, uh, it's about the material science contradicts the senses, even then, when this was published, and it's doing it more and more all the time, that what we feel, think, sense with our senses is incorrect. It's all programmed of what it's supposed to be in this culture. It's a cultural programming. It's not real. Right. It's not real. It's not real. Remember, were you here for John's talk yes. yesterday? Sunday? Yeah. And he showed that clip. I think I talked to you about it. And I went home and told him all about the class. I was so excited. He said, oh, I'm going to show that clip on Sunday. It's the one from Emergent where she's in the, the, the water. And she's dying. And all of a sudden she goes, this is not real. And she just taps at her experience three times, and then the whole thing explodes out. That's what you've got, clicking your heels. If you've got a divorce, if you've got a lawsuit, if you've got something that is challenging you. We had somebody in, in class last night, the IRS sent them a notice that they owed $160,000. And we were saying it's not real. It's just flat out not real. I don't know what it is, but it's not real. She went to one accountant and boom, it wasn't real. It was a mistake and it's gone. All of that happened in a week. But if you go and you panic and you say, oh my God, look at my letter from the IRS. I owe them $160,000. It's terrible. It's going to put me out on the streets. Then that's what we can create. But it's not real because the only essence that is real is the presence of the divine. And that is what's going on right now. David and then Katya. So in answer to your question about how appearances of sickness and all these other things show up, it kind of goes for me back to the quality of God being that has choice and imagination. And in fact, there's all of this sounds like a lot of imagination. But I can imagine things that almost by definition is imagination. It's not real. Right. And then it shows up. Oh, so I just need to watch where my 
exactly. Exactly. You've got to watch where your thoughts go. Yes, thank you. Katya. The idea of denying it is taking place when you say that is not real. Exactly. And so it is not any different from old time metaphysics to now time metaphysics when you use it. Right. You use it with the power of knowledge. Denial takes place, but there are no words that are necessary to bridge from what appears to be real to what is real. And right. that is where the magic takes place. Right. And that is where you have supposedly miracles take place. I like miracles. I like miracles because they're fun. <laughs> they are. They're fun. And, and in old-timey metaphysics, miracles were much more common than they are now. That's right. Because that's all you had. <clears throat> you didn't have, you know, uh, whatever antibiotics are. I was going to say acetaminophen. No, that's Tylenol. <laughs> whatever the, they are, you didn't have that. You didn't have something in your back pocket. You had to put your faith in that which you could not see, because that which you could see was going to have you out of here, or crippled, or losing a limb, or something like that. And so what we were much more motivated to do was to put our faith in the unseen. And I get that when people come to see me and, and they say, oh my god, the biopsy came back and it's malignant. And I go, why didn't you come to see me before they took the biopsy? Why did you wait until your back is up against the wall? But that's their creation. And now they're motivated. Okay, what do I need to do? You need to let go of the past. And if that means you need to get forgiveness sheets and all of that, that's fine. But the purpose of it is to let go of the past, to let go of any story or idea that says you are any less than this amazing being of light and love and power and glory. God as you, to let go of all of that. And in letting go of that, your body comes into alignment with that. You know how many people are dead because they felt like they needed to be punished for something? So they created something inside of their bodies, and then they struggled and <coughs> suffered and died. All because there was an idea that they were not this magnificent being, that there was something wrong with them, that they were here to be punished or to be uh, put down in some way. And so when you can come into alignment with this amazing thing that you are, literally you harness the power of all of creation. And then stuff is easy. Gosh, money is easy. Cars are easy. Houses are easy. Physical healings are easy. Life is easy. Because you are riding a wave of pure, perfect spirit, and it will carry you into that divine life filled with divine manifestations. All you need to do is not screw it up. <laughs> like David said, pay attention to where your imagination is going. If you're not going to affirm what you don't want, then what do you have to do? You have to affirm what you do want. And if you have some kind of pain, or if you have some kind of fear, or if you have some kind of experience going on in your life, it is easy to get caught up in that. And that's where the mental discipline comes in. That you have to affirm what you want 24 hours a day. You never are off the hook. Never are off the hook. You never let the lie come out of your mouth. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was one, and the Word was with God. Correct translation. In the beginning was the thought, and the thought was one, and the thought was with God. And so when you have that thought which precedes your Word, and your Word comes out of your mouth, vibrating into physical form, and you control that, and you, you aim it correctly to have that which you want show up in your life, amazing things happen. <coughs> But you can't let the lie come through. That's the old life, trying to get a foot in your door and say, Oh, Barbara, you don't want prosperity and success and joy and love. You want to play small. You want to hide. You want to be afraid. Remember that? We all know that life. Let me get my foot in my door and I go, Get thee behind me, Satan. I say, that is a lie, and you have no presence and no power in my life. I will not listen to you. I will not speak of you. I will not think of you. And to get me not to do that, because it's right there with its foot in my door, I'm going to insist on thinking, speaking about everything that I hold to be true. Only God is real. 
I am a manifestation of spirit in form as me. That is the only reality. I am prosperous. I am love. I am holy. I am perfect. I am complete. I am absolute health. I am absolute joy. That is the only thing I will let myself think about. And Ernest says, if you have to stay up all night long to wrap your head around that, that is your only job. To wrap your head around that. And then there, there no longer is even a door for the old you to get its foot into. There is only that experience of who you truly are. And people start looking at you and go, gosh, you just there's this light coming out of you. You look fantastic. You look 20 years younger. Oh, wow, look at this. You got a new car. Oh, you, you, you've uh, booked that cruise that you wanted to go on. Oh, you've started that business that you always wanted to do. Oh, there's this big smile on your face because you are who you were meant to be. Not the lie that somebody told you that we all bought into because we didn't know any better. But now you know you are no longer off the hook. Jackie. Mm -hmm. The phrase free will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does free will equate to choice? Yes. And okay, so we were given free will to choose right. relativity or absolute. No. Okay. The absolute is that which includes the relative. You cannot choose either or. You are always at the point of the absolute. The formless is that which includes all form, but it is not limited to form, so you cannot choose one or the other. Whether you are choosing the formless or form, you are always at the point of the formless. Whether you are choosing God or man, God is which includes man. And so you may say, I am only man, I am not God, but you can't get out of being God because God is inside, because man is inside of God. And that's where I'm asking you to go a little crazy, Jackie. I want you to go crazy with me. I feel like Hafiz. I want you to go crazy with me. I want you to practice for six more weeks that none of this is real. That the only thing that is real is the presence of spirit right here and right now. And as such, it has everything. It's got money and opportunity and ideas and divine guidance and health and energy and my affirmation right now, time. Time expands to meet my every desire. It's got time for me. I can stop time and do a whole day's worth of work and then pick the time up again. I can do that because I am God. Go crazy with me and watch and see how your life changes. This is so exciting to me because I've always loved this old-fashioned metaphysics. It's what I learned. It's why my life was healed. I was 24 years old. I had a three-year-old child. I was on welfare, food stamps, had just been in a car accident where I went 40 feet off a cliff and landed on my head and cracked my skull open and my friend died. I was sleeping on somebody's floor. I was given plasma twice a week to try to have enough money to feed my kid and I was skinny as a rail because he was the only one eating. I know what this can do. And somebody told me that there is a presence and a power within you that is more real than all of these other circumstances. Doesn't matter how you got here, it's not real. It's all smoke and mirrors. The only thing that is real is what you focus on in this moment, and you will command the power of all creation to come into form at the point of your life, and that will show up. Go crazy with me. Let people think you're nuts. Your car starts chugging out of gas, but that's not real. I always have more than enough to make it to the gas station. Your card comes back, it's not working, that's not real. My card always works. Just put it in again. Don't worry about it. It'll work. If something happens where one contract closes, it doesn't matter. Contracts seek you out. And then the phone rings. We had somebody here last night who said that they took a job that they knew they shouldn't take because they felt pressured to go to work. They realized it wasn't for them had a heart-to-heart -heart with their husband and family and said, we are going to all be eating beans from now on, but I will not be where I don't fit. Two days later, she got offered the job of a lifetime. 
her heart's desire. Because when we look at something and say, no, you are not for me, you're not my fit, you're not my genius, you're not where I'm supposed to be, you're not what I'm supposed to be doing, we open up to go, yes, you are my perfect and right fit, you are my genius, you are what I'm supposed to be doing, and it doesn't matter if everybody says you're crazy and that's impossible and it'll never happen, it's yours. And it will find you like, you know, Scotty having the tractor beam on. And just bring it right into your life as long as you exercise dominion over your thought and you do not allow yourself to get caught up in the past that which is limited, that which is small, that which is fear-based, but you demand and insist from yourself that this that you know to be true, or you would have left with whoever walked out a few minutes ago, you would have said, these people are nuts, I'm out of here. The fact that you have stayed is a part of you that knows this is true. You know it's true, no matter what's going on. You know there's something greater in you. You know that your life is supposed to be more than whatever it has been in the past. It's supposed to be an ongoing evolution of consciousness, which includes happiness and joy. You know that's the truth of you. So when you demand that of yourself, and you not cave in, and you not give up, then that has to show up. And it shows up as instantaneous healings, miraculous regressions, uh, Lottery wins. You know, I love the story of Tom Wright. He didn't even buy the ticket. <laughs> or, or he did pay for it, but he didn't ask for it. He walked into the pharmacy. The woman had already printed it out, and she said, this is for you. Wow. And he said, okay. And he went and paid for it, and that Saturday night, he won the North Carolina Powerball. He came in, it was in the middle of a prosperity class. Were you in that class? Yes. He came in with it wrapped up in black garbage bags, this big check. We're going, what is this? It was the last night of class, and he had raised his hand the week before that he hadn't demonstrated any unexpected income. And John got in his face and said, you are a licensed practitioner of religious science. You are a practitioner in this center. You will demonstrate unexpected income. Do I have an agreement with you that you are demonstrating unexpected income, and you're going to have it in your hand when you come back to class next week? And he said yes. And he walked into a, 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 a drugstore and they handed him the winning ticket. What do you think is such a big issue in your life? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's got that health and wholeness and it has already been brought back into alignment with the spiritual reality of who you are. All you need to do is wake up to it. Chris. I started watching The Wizard of Oz when I was five years old. And... I didn't know anything about metaphysics, of course, and throughout my entire life, um, I have had this movie come forward to me, and it is, you know, all of the characters already had, just as we have the absolute, they already had those things, the heart, the courage, you know, all of that stuff, and then they, you know, they go, they persevere, and they take action, and they know that this is what they want, and in the end of this movie, they all had it. It was already there, and they didn't have the physical brain, but they knew that they were intelligent. You know, so that's, it was just, just incredible, and I saw this on the big screen this past weekend, and it all just came falling into place for me, that a movie at the age of five has brought me to where I am right now. Exactly, 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 because truth speaks to the masses. And those things that carry on, that lift us, it's a wonderful life. The Wizard of Oz, Star Wars, Yoda, Yoda, the little guru Yoda. They, they live on because there is that within us that knows what is true. Stephanie. Well, I, I've read uh, four chapters, and every single one of the chapters has something that's really calls to me strongly and narrows it down and then I put that into my practice. So uh, each chapter is is fabulous. It is, it is. Yeah. This is a great book. I read started reading this book and I just got so excited. And I think I start I found it six months ago. And I knew I wanted to do a class, but I knew I, I probably couldn't work it in until winter. And then I thought, well, let's just do a winter class. And it's got so much Bible that you can't fight the Bible in it. You might as well embrace it and bill it. 
This is based on scripture. Yeah. So all the people who are interested in how Bible and metaphysics work hand in hand, come on and we'll look at that. But she is just exciting to me. And I don't know if I told you, but I have, uh, I have new thought in my blood, Margaret and I. <laughs> Our grandmother, Irene Floyd, was a sopranoist for Mary Baker Eddy in the First Church of Christ Science in Boston. My father was raised in Christian science. He hated it. As soon as he could, he got out of it, and then he and my mother had an ongoing battle to see who was sicker until he died, and she won, and then she didn't have to be sick anymore. It was fascinating. 92 or 93, I forget what. But, but it's almost as if there's a part of me that has heard these words. Great oratory is so important. Words that can lift you and inspire you and wake you up are so great. And I agree with you that she's got it in these books. Any other questions? Rick. I noticed at the conclusion of this chapter, it says, pray without ceasing. Right, yes. right. Right. Every thought is a prayer. Right, which means every thought is a prayer. And what kind of a prayer are you going to pray? Are you going to pray a beseeching prayer? Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh, Lord, I'm a miserable sinner. Can somebody come by and give me a bid on putting in an invisible fence? Since I last seen you, my dogs have found the road. <laughs> now the neighbors have my cell phone number. They came to my front door with these wandering dogs. So there was a guy who came to give me a, a bid on it, and his last comment to me was, I'm just a poor white boy, and he took his cigarette and flicked it onto my driveway. Uh, and I thought, I'm not going to have you touch anything that's around me. I'm not going to have you touch it. And I said, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm just not going to do this. And he was not happy. But when we have allow that in, it's a prayer. And if we don't go into lecture, well, you're not poor, you know, and, and, and we're all one, and, and this this screw you that you just did with your cigarette butt on my driveway was a real nonverbal communication. So I'm choosing not to have my consciousness be anywhere near your consciousness or have you tromp all over my property. I'm not going to do that. If I'm not willing to do that, I have to at least not be around them. Because to be quiet and to go forward with that is to give agreement to that mindset and I'm not going to do it. So when you pray without ceasing, and we'll talk about that in the second half of class, that means you have to monitor everything, what is said and what is not said. What do you give agreement to by not saying anything? Because then you put yourself in alignment with that. And that's your prayer. Let's take a break. Until we turn the camera off, thank you. Prayer without ceasing. So on to uh, what I wanted to talk about, which is the power of our word. When we understand, and, and remember, the, the word word is being used to include, but not to be limited to the actual words that we use in language. English words, Spanish words, that kind of thing. It is the power of the word, that which is spoken forth into form, which also translates to thought. We don't ever say anything, even if someone says that was thoughtless, we don't ever say anything that does not first have a thought preceding it. We don't ever have a feeling or an emotion without first having a thought preceded. So what we want to look at is the power of this idea of thought and word, because by the time it's coming out of your mouth, it's pretty anchored in your consciousness. You thought it, you formulated the sentence, you got your grammar and your syntax right, and you're speaking it, sometimes with great emotional charge to it. So when you realize that you are commanding all of this amazing creative power with the power of your word, we start to be more mindful of where we go with that. 
And this is not, uh, this is not new. He, she's going back to the idea that we are made in the image and likeness of God. She quotes Solomon, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's interesting how many quotes that Jesus, that we have of Jesus, Jesus was quoting someone else. And then in the Dhammapada, it says, all that we are is a result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts. It is made up of our thoughts. If a man speaks or acts with an evil thought, pain follows him as the wheel follows the ox that draws the cart. If a man speaks or acts with a pure thought, happiness follows him like a shadow that never leaves him. So when was this? 12,000 years before Jesus? Saying all that we are is a result of our thoughts. And when they're looking at, at, at if, we, if we speak, remember evil is just live backwards. Sin is an old archer's term that means to miss the mark. We don't want to get into this giant universal power of the devil and evil and hell and all of that. That's a crock. But there is this idea that if we are not in alignment with our true selves, then we are going to experience the cause, the, the effect of that cause. And so if we have suffering and struggling and pain following us like a cart behind an ox, we're pulling our way through life. Haven't you ever felt like you're dragging a ball and chain with you? Like you're weighted down with the things that are attached to you? They're attached to you because you spoke them into being. So that's when it is important to look at what are we doing with our words. And a good place is just to start listening to what's coming out of your mouth. Listen. If you have a good friend and they listen to what's coming out of your mouth, you may want to give them permission to bring that up. Bring that up. Is that really what you wanted to say? Is that really the best of you? Is that really where you want to go? Is that really what you want to live out? Not with a lot of judgment, not with a lot of I got you, but hello. <coughs> Sometimes just hello is a good, good response. Hello? <laughs> really? You want to go there? Start listening to what's coming out of your mouth, understanding that that was preceded by a thought. And then start listening to your thoughts. Think about what you're thinking about. If you have a headache, it's not because you're thinking about what you're thinking about. It's because you're not thinking about what you're thinking about. You're thinking, I have a headache. I can't think about what I'm thinking about. I get a headache. No, 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 no. That's what's going to free you from that. Think about what you're thinking about. Start noticing where you're coming from. Check out your feelings. If you go from feeling joyful, today's a happy day, today's the best day ever, to feeling like everything is overwhelming and everything is too much and, and, and the wind's been knocked out of you, backtrack that. What happened to you? How did you go from being this amazing spiritual being to being nothing but a lump of clay? How did you do that? What did you do to yourself? What did you think inside of your own head? What did you give life to that was not real? And then take it back. I know that I thought just because my boss called me and told me not to bother coming in today that that, that was real and that meant that I was going to lose my home and not be able to eat and all these checks were going to bounce that I had written based on the money I was going to get. And, and I know that I thought that, but that is not real. What is real? What is the truth? The truth is, is that we are made out of God itself, that we are made out of abundance and prosperity, and we always have more than enough, and that everything that is the divine in form always has whatever it needs. It's like people who say they're homeless. You're not homeless. You always have home. You are always welcome in this world. And if you will stop thinking I'm homeless, you'll find yourself in a home. So where did you go astray. Backtrack it, look at it, change it, insist on it, demand it, be it, and then watch something else show up. You know, if he hadn't called and told me not to come in, I wouldn't have been here for this call, which is way better than what that other thing would have been. Let that blessing show up. She talks about this idea of discord, discord and disease arising from a mixed mentality. What would that be? 
mixed mentality. Duality. Duality. Thinking two thoughts at the same time that aren't in alignment with each other. You cannot demonstrate prosperity and poverty at the same time. You cannot demonstrate love and hate at the same time. You cannot demonstrate uh, health and disease at the same time. You gotta pick. And if you have discord and disharmony in your life, you're bouncing around in your thinking, you're bouncing around in your speaking. And I've had people come to me. I know that I'm supposed to be claiming my health, but I've got an appointment with the VA and I'm trying to get disability here, so I'm in a quandary of when I go to the VA, I'm gonna tell them all these things that are wrong with me, and is that going to, um, uh, to anchor that disease in my body? And my answer is yes. Yes, you've gotta pick. Are you sick and you wanna get disability, or are you healthy and you can live the God life you were meant to live? You don't get to have it both ways. And that's where so many of us go astray. We want to come here and we want to have our hearts open. We want to be loving. We want to be prosperous. We want to be these amazing people. And then we want to go out in the world and we want to honk our horn and we want to try to cut somebody off and we want to blame somebody for something that happened. You don't get to have it both ways. You've got to pick. And I recommend that you pick the thought process that says, all that there is is God. Nothing else is real. Nothing can touch me unless I let it touch me. Nothing is real unless I make it real. And I choose to make real, inform that eternal, everlasting truth that I am pure, perfect, spirit, powerful beyond my wildest dreams, a being of light, a being of love, a being of pure health, happiness, wholeness in every way. Go there, and nothing else will matter. Jane. The thing of what is? What, what does that mean? The thing of it is. All right. Because if you're going to challenge me on this, I don't really want to hear it. Uh, I'm not challenging you. I'm just asking what to do if you're thinking I'm God and everything is perfect and you're wrapped up in that and you bump into a, an oncoming car. Right? Then, then you're God and everything is perfect. Who cares if you bumped into an ongoing car? Well, that's their problem. No, it's your problem. No, it isn't. It's not a problem unless you make it a problem. It's simply that you bumped into an oncoming car. This may be a divine destiny, a divine appointment. Not if you crash into if you're Well, you went from a bump to a crash, so I feel like you're challenging me. What I'm asking you, Jane, is to set your normal way of thinking aside. I'm asking everybody in the class to set it aside. Give me six weeks. Give me six weeks to work on you where none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter if you hit another car. It doesn't matter if you crash into another car. I want you to hear me. It doesn't matter if your house burns down. It doesn't matter if you get fired. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you make it matter, it will matter. So don't make it matter. Let it just be. Let the insurance companies work it out. If you've got a check to write, write it. Know that you are God in form as a powerful, amazing spiritual being. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. This is your genius, and you're doing great. And let it be okay. And watch how things shift in your life. But if you want to hold on to good and bad and right and wrong, you will be trying to demonstrate two different things at once. You will come to this class and you'll say, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. And then you'll go out into the world and go, that's wrong, that's wrong. And not only you, but so many people do that. I watch you. You come here on Sundays and you're lovely and I see you at Whole Foods. <laughs> Of sorrows out of your thoughts 
put out from you every doubt and fear and hold fast only to those thoughts that God thinks. Wow, I'm thinking God thoughts. Well, Barbara, how do I feel like I'm a powerful spiritual being? I don't know. Think God thoughts. See with God's eyes. Love with God's heart. Speak the word of God. Don't play small. Don't hold yourself back. Don't stay into this world of physical form. It's not real. Go to God. Be God. Think God. Feel God. Know God. Speak God. And only with dualistic languaging can I say that. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's such a relief. <laughs> she says, if you would be constantly happy, which is one of my major goals for me and everyone else, if we would be constantly happy, that is, manifest our true being, which is at peace, strong and healthy, prosperous and full of love and knowledge, we must think good thoughts not only now and then, but perpetually, which means casting out every other kind of thought. That's where we get to pray without ceasing. Think the thoughts that we want to live without sacrificing principle on special occasions because you know, all of that is <coughs> well and good, but what about this issue? No, that issue doesn't exist. It only exists if you want it to exist you can hold it into form, it takes a lot of energy, but there is nothing to keep it into form once you pull your energy away, therefore it's not real. That's how I can say it's not real, because as soon as you keep, as soon as you stop pumping it up with life, by telling everybody about it, by thinking about it, by putting a lot of energy into it, it's gone. That means it's not real. It was only your limited creation. It had no substance of itself. Does that start to help you understand how you can be crazy? Yeah. <laughs> because this is a specialized crazy. <laughs> it is. It's a specialized crazy. Yes, put gas in your tank. Unless you finally are the person that can drive without gas, I haven't met him. Yes, put money in your bank account. Yes, put food in your body. But what about the people who just live off air? That's great for them. It's okay for you to eat. But don't think that that rules you in any way, shape, or form. It's only gas. It's only money. It's only food. It is not who you are. It doesn't determine you. You are determined from God. Does that make sense? Yeah. You love this. You just love I this stuff. Not get that. <laughs> and then he goes to talk about heaven and hell as states of consciousness. Didn't I tell you last week that Pope John Paul, three popes ago, said that heaven and hell are states of consciousness, they're not real places. And that was covered as a major story everywhere in the world, but in the U.S. It was not put in one single newspaper or TV uh, report in the United States. Yeah, I had to find it, I think, in a Canadian paper. And I remember I brought it in and went, even the Pope says it! And then it just kind of vanished. Heaven and hell are states of consciousness. You create your heaven with your thought. And then she goes into Bible stuff a little bit. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, like, yo, look here, the kingdom's here, oh no, look there, the kingdom's there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, within you. And in another spot, uh, Jesus says, if they tell you that the kingdom of heaven is in the sky, the, the birds are going to get there before you. If they tell you the kingdom of heaven is in the sea, the fish are going to get there before you. It's not in the sky, it's not in the sea, it's not here and it's not there, it is within you. And so conveniently, people just blow that one off to talk about how women have to obey men and all of this other polyamity. It's not Christianity, it's polyamity. So if you are going to create a state of consciousness of heaven, what must you do? Be happy. Think like God. For many, many people, you've got to move out of hell. 
If you're going to be in a state of consciousness of heaven, you've got to get out of this hell consciousness that you may have put yourself in ever so briefly. I know people are going, I didn't put myself in. <laughs> but that dirty rat and rack and fretch, it took that away from me. That's hell. 20 years ago, they did this to me. That's hell. I'm not going to be a member of this center. I was once wounded in spiritual community, and I will never let myself be that again. That's hell. I'll never love another one again. Oh, the divorce was awful. I had everything stripped from me. I gave the best years of my life. I'll never let anybody close again. That's hell. That's hell. That's hell. So get out of hell. And you get out of hell to the extent that you move into heaven. Yeah, camera, yeah. You get out of heaven, hell to the extent that you move into heaven. So how do you move into heaven? Change your thinking. What are you going to think about, though? Be happy. What else? Love. Think about love. Think about love. Gratitude. What else? Gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude is a wonderful way to pray without ceasing. Just be grateful. If anything at all is going wrong, stop, take a breath, and find something to be grateful for. Does it matter what? You know, it sends me into Abraham's rampage of appreciation. Just take your pick. Let's have this chair. I love plastic. Do you know that this chair looks and feels like material, but it's really plastic? So that when you spill your coffee on it or you rub your chocolate frosting into it, we can just pour water right on it and it washes the stains and the, the food right out of it. I love plastic. What about tubular aluminum? Isn't that great? They used to make chairs out of tubular steel, and God bless steel, that's fantastic. But aluminum is so much lighter. And whenever we're picking them up, it's so nice to have it be a nice light chair. And just look at mechanics of this. It folds and it opens. It's got little pads on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the floor. Is this not the greatest thing since sliced bread? My problems just went away. I moved out of hell and I moved into heaven. And you don't need anything. You want to be grateful for something? Be grateful for your thumb. You've got opposable thumb. That is amazing. We are the ones with the opposable thumbs, and we can do so much because we have this little thumb. It's a great appendage, and you can just go off on your thumb. You can go off on your wrist. You know? Yeah. You can just go off on yourself. <laughs> and you have moved out of hell and you've moved into heaven and you've learned how to pray without ceasing through a very simple prayer of gratitude. You don't have to get all holy. You don't have to get all spiritual. You don't have to be grateful for world peace. Be grateful for a chair. Be grateful for your thumb. Be grateful for heat. Be grateful for water. It doesn't matter what you're grateful for, just be grateful. Yes, Jane? How about uh, being grateful for the other drivers on the road? <laughs> that they are safe. And that you are safe. And be grateful for your safety. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Right. That's great. You, <laughs> and I, I invite you to transcend it and not resolve it. One of my favorite quotes from Ernest Holmes is, and it's a quote actually from Sri Aurobindo in The Life Divine. And he says, transcendence transmutes. It does not rectify. You do not have to stay in the realm of the relative and try to rectify a problem or an issue. It doesn't exist. There is no solution to it. Transcend it. Move up into a higher state of consciousness where you know that God is all that there is. Transcend your problems. Transcend your history. Transcend your physical self. Transcend your personality. Transcend your worries and your fears. There is no rectification for that which is not real. You're never going to do it. You're going to go around in circles and you're going to live in hell. Rise up out of the conditions of life into the absolute, unchanging truth that God is all that there is, that that energy of spirit is made manifest as you now. You are not a part of God. You are all of God. 
and that that power of creation comes through you with every thought that you think and with every word that you speak. Let your problems go by the wayside. They were never here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And rise up. If you want to get out of hell. <laughs> yes, Jane. <Jim. laughs> would gratitude be a uh, tool? Gratitude is always a good tool. For transcendence. Yes. So when you get in your car, just put forth gratitude like you just did. All yeah. the people are safe, you're safe, and it's done. So, as we look at speaking the word, and we look at saying things that are so diametrically opposed, it's like Jane really wants to hold on to the car accident. She really wants to hold on to it, and I'm telling her it's not real. Is that a lie? I've had people very upset with me who say, how dare you say, and so it is, when it is not. And I say, if it isn't, it will never be. And if it is not, it never will be. So, and so it is, open up that doorway to make it so. But there are people who think we are liars because we don't, we don't give adequate credence to the physical realm in our striving to move into a greater spiritual experience. And I'm just curious as to what you think, if you have any thoughts on that. Because it's an important thing to get clear on. Otherwise, a part of you says, oh, I have more than enough money to cover this bill, and even though that check bounced and I was counting on it, I was like, you liar. <laughs> Jeff, see so, if your pants are on fire, because you're a liar, liar. <laughs> so, so as a creative being, my concern is about what's coming into form. Not what's in form. Oh yeah, what's in form is old that's, news. That's, that's yeah. old news. Yeah. Old news. That's old news. Mm -hmm. so exactly. As a creative being, I'm concerned about what's coming into form. Exactly. Somebody gave us some this couple of weeks ago. We won't go about that being the east and all of that, but it's still true. Yes. You know, and, and that's where my focus is about, and to have fun in what's creating the creative next. Right, because the. The emotional state that you are in, which is why she says if you want to be happy consistently, the emotional state that you are in is the emotional state that carries through into your creation. If you are afraid, you're going to create with fear. If you're struggling, you're going to create with struggle. So create out of joy. Hold on for a second. There was one more hand before Rick. Susan. I think I remember what I was going to say. Uh, one of the first lessons in metaphysics came many years ago with Eric Butterworth, and he gave an example of looking through the hole in the fence at a construction site and seeing other people saw nothing. He saw the creation of the building and the community and said, and so it is. Mm -hmm. So I think of that, um, so speaking it into word, no, maybe other people don't see it, but speaking it and knowing it and believing it, it will be, and it so will, it is. It will be, and you get that and you can't from experience of doing it and having it show up. Right, and as you said before, nothing exists without the thought of it. So that building can't have been created without the thought and the vision of what that building was going to be. And the thought contains everything that is necessary. All of the contractors and the funding everything. and the, yeah. the approvals and all of that for it to come up and form completely is already there at the point of the thought. And you so don't have to do that. All you have to do is think the high thought. Rick. Trowitt talks about the mental equivalence, and I think that that's really where we, where, that's the real world, is we create the form into which we put our thoughts, and that's what manifests for us. Right. So mental equivalence is when we hold within ourselves an idea of that which is to be. And then the universe fills that with whatever needs to show up in spiritual substance to make manifest on the spiritual realm to reflect in the physical realm. Listen to me. It is created on the spiritual realm and reflected in the physical realm. This is still not real. This is a reflection. We create at a different realm. And when you can get comfortable being in that realm, you can create anything you want. Anything you want. 
So here we are looking at the idea that perhaps as we're moving forward in our lives, there's either going to come from inside of ourselves or a reflection of our own doubt, someone usually close to us on the outside that says, you're not, you're not right, this can't happen, it's impossible, and you just looking at something and saying that it's not real doesn't make it not real, you are in fact lying. And I want you to hear that, not that I want to set you up for that, but that I want you to be prepared if that happens. People call me a liar all the time. Like, yes, I will lie about what's not, I will call what is not true, not true. And I will stay true to what I know. Remember last week I said, I know what I know and I'm never going to let go of it. I know that I know it and I'm not giving up on it because public opinion has turned against what I think. I know what I know. We live in a world of peace. We live in a world of abundance. We live in a world of joy and happiness and safety. And that is the only reality. I don't care what people are doing with their own choice. And so as I know that if someone comes up to me and says, you're sick as a dog. Oh, poor baby. I don't too much either. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> you must have 104 temperature. You're so sick. Your face is bright red. You must have the flu. Or what was it? Oh my God, maybe you have Ebola. You know, let's go to the hospital. <laughs> uh, I am not sick. Sickness has no presence in my life. Sickness has no power in my life. Sickness is, a, is an illusion and I am made out of pure, perfect God health right here and right now. And they look at you and they go, you are out of your freaking mind. <laughs> so be it. Let us be out of our minds if our minds are dwelling in the gutter of sickness and lack and limitation. Cheryl and then Susan. Sometimes that person that's close to us is us. Right, that's why it's called to us. It's always us, even if we are projecting it out onto somebody else. The old person who had a miraculous healing of your brain, yes, you wrap your head around that, and that which has been out of order for years, all of a sudden comes back into order. The body will reflect what we give it. Susan. I was just going to say the same thing as that. In the case of a baby, when people are looking in at that baby who they're claiming and speaking out loud, of the baby is sick and the baby needs this to get well, is it the adults around the baby that could lift the baby out of that state? Sure. It, it, it's, it's multifaceted. You know, Ernest says that if a child is sick, it's the parents who need to be worked with, right. so they stop seeing the child as sick. But you're looking at the baby then as some helpless victim, which babies are not. They're powerful, creative, spiritual beings. God and form and as them just in a very young body. But they are absolutely creating their reality. But could it, could it hurt to have all the adults around them go, oh, you're getting so much better. You're doing such a good job. Oh, you're a great healer. Everything's going well for you, of course. <coughs> but don't look at children as anything less than who everyone is just because they're new on this planet or new this time around. Who knows who they are? <coughs> and it always comes back to us. Our job to pray without ceasing is to know the truth of ourselves and then to know the truth of everybody else. Which means if you've got a child in your world that is manifesting illness, you don't say, oh, poor little Billy, you know, he's got blah, blah, blah. No, that child is perfect God spirit in form right here and right now. And the only thing that I see in them is exactly what I see in me, which is absolute vibrant health, the spiritual substance of the universe made manifest as every organ, every tissue, every blood cell, every part of that child's body is God's body right here and right now. And I don't care what the images are that are coming into my mind or what the words are that are coming into my word, I will not deter from that. That's where your discipline comes in. Your discipline is to choose your thoughts. If you move into hell, get out and go to heaven. 
Choose your thoughts. Think wisely about how you're commanding the power of the universe into form. Don't get caught up in the world of effects at all. It's not real. Be crazy. Be schizophrenic. Rise up. Transcend and watch the circumstances in your life transmute. They'll transmute into something wonderful. You all had that happen. Somebody leaves you, you get fired, something happens that is a big surprise and something better shows up. You've all had that happen. The blessing is in the quote unquote problem. And if you rise up into the realm of blessing, you can take the blessing. If you stay down in the realm of problem, you'll only get the problem. It's your choice and it's by what you allow the words in your, in your mind to come out of your mouth as that directs that experience in your life. It's time to step up. It's time to wake up. It's time to be aware. It's time to take action. It's time to practice. And when you do that and stop fighting for your own limitations and trying to hide and be powerful at the same time, which is never going to work, when you do that, you will have things that people will call miracles in your life. And on top of it all, you get to be happy. You get to be healthy. You get to be joyous. You get to have a lot of money. You get to do what you want to do and go where you want to go and be who you want to be. Those are all the perks of realizing that divine presence that you are. So there is no off time, even if your football team loses. <laughs> <laughs>